how crappy the NFC East is. As a matter of fact, out of my uh, power rankings, the 32nd ranked team is, of course, the New York Jets. And after that, it's the rest of the, uh, the NFC East because of the way that they've been playing. So and out of all the teams in the NFC East, I got to believe that the Giants right now at this moment may be the most healthy. Oh, yeah, they are. I mean, even with, with the Sterling Shepard up in the air, which I'd love to have him back for Daniel Jones. But, I mean, they'll look around at these other teams. It's crazy. I mean, the Dallas Cowboys, we know the Dak injury is the biggest one. And the Philadelphia Eagles have been decimated all around Carson Wentz. The New York Giants, I mean, they may not be the talent most talented right now in the division, but, yeah, they are the healthiest. And that counts for something, especially in this year that's been so strange. Well, you have two, you have two teams that have quarterback quandaries. You have one team that quarterback's trying to do everything by himself. That's Carson Wentz, and tonight in Philadelphia, you'll, you'll see that. And then you have, uh, you know, you have the Giants, who are just kind of plodding along. They've been uh, competitive in most of these games. Uh, they could have win. Uh, they could have won a number of these games. And you know, tonight's a night again where, for me anyway, watching this game, I'm going to be excited to see what Daniel Jones brings again. You know, this is. Still a uh, a process that has been frustrating for a lot of Giant fans, been frustrating for a lot of us watching this, the amount of turnovers and all that other stuff. But it, it still has an exciting feel to it simply because of him. And then, you know, when we were thinking about this coming draft, okay, the 2021 mm-hmm. draft coming up, uh, and everybody assumes, and, and I talked to three talent, talent evaluators in the NFL yesterday, and I wanted to get their perspective on Trevor Lawrence. They all believe that he is a can't-miss player. They all believe it. And I think most fans believe it. I think most people who watch his games believe it. And if you don't believe me, you can go to YouTube anytime you want, and you can watch pretty much every throw he's ever made. I feel like Clemson. everybody looks I feel like everybody looks great on YouTube. I feel like they put those highlight films together, and everybody looks great. Yeah, but there's, I mean, a, but there's also there's real, there's real footage that you can look at. Just watch the guy. All you have to do is put on a clip. Watch last week's game <laughs> over. And then I think he threw a pick in that game at some point, which was a shocker. But just you know, take a look at his uh, five-touchdown performance or whatever it was in the first half of the game against Georgia Tech, and that's all you need to see. Every play, he looked like the super star that we expect him to be right and he's also he's an incredible runner for his size so there is a there's a aspect to his game that trans that that looks a lot like josh allen's game up in buffalo but he is much more refined as a quarterback and you could see all the like pocket awareness you could see all the pocket presence you could see the accurate throws you could see that he could see over his offensive line kind of like justin herbert uh, for the Chargers. So so I, I just asked three random guys uh, that have no connection to each other other than the fact that they're all in the NFL and they all mm-hmm. have talent evaluators or scouts, if you will, and every single one of them said he's a can't-miss player. Every single yep. one of them. Now, there's going to be the rando guy out there that's going to t- pick apart something here about his game or the fact that he's playing on the best team and the fact he's playing in a worse, a bad conference and, you know, he's going to look like he's yeah. a you know, man amongst boys and things of that nature. But that's okay. That's, he just has to go out there and it's, do what he's been doing each and every week. It's not like he hasn't beaten good teams, though, for true, crying out true. loud. I mean, we've seen him on the biggest of stages have huge games. So, I mean, that you can counteract that argument. Yeah, I know. I understand that the ACC is essentially a joke. But for crying out loud, I mean, when they get into the college football playoff, it's not a joke against those teams. And he still looks great. But he's not going to the Giants. The, the Giants are going to win some games yeah, this year. That. I know. But... Uh, and he's not going there. But uh, essentially for the Jets, yes. I mean, all this stuff is exciting if he ends up with them. Well, the reason I, the reason I say that is because you know the Jets have you know the third overall pick as their quarterback right now and maybe he's going to start practicing uh yesterday and you know maybe maybe he'll be available for this Sunday's game you know against Buffalo I'm not sure but uh there will be a question that they have to ask themselves but let's just say it is the Giants Hmm. you know the Giants last year had a chance to draft both Tua Tunga Bailoa and Justin Herbert and they didn't well, yeah, I mean, they had one year of Daniel Jones who looked really, really good. Let's not forget that. We were all over Daniel Jones at the end of last year. Nobody thought that they would have gone with a quarterback in the first round this year. I mean, if you wanted to go back to the Saquon Barkley draft and say, well, you you missed out on a couple of guys in that one. You know, Josh Allen was in that draft. Obviously, we know Baker Mayfield and Sam Darnold. They haven't worked out, but... 
uh, really all that much. We'll see how it plays out. But you had Josh Allen, you had Lamar Jackson uh, in that particular first round, and the Giants had opportunities there. They waited. They got Daniel Jones the next year. But there wasn't even a thought that they were going to move on from Daniel Jones after a year. We were all over him. Well, uh, I mean, I, if, if they are, you know, I mean, he, he's got – and there are other quarterbacks in this draft, too. But uh, th- this is like the, the coveted number one pick is there for somebody. And whoever that somebody is, even if they have a young quarterback, with the exception of a handful of teams, you know, the Chargers would be one of them. We'll see how Tua looks in a Miami uniform now here for the last 10 games. But he, he is, I'm telling you, he's a can miss player. And he is the, the, the one player that everybody would want. And if the Jets do end up having it, and let's say Joe Douglas decides, okay, you know, Sam, Sam is our guy. We love him. We want to keep him. You know, that thing is going to be worth a king's ransom. You know, and that's another decision that you have to evaluate and look at wow. and everything else. I doubt that they would ever trade it, but no. it all depends on how, you know, how desperate somebody else may be. You just, you just, never, you just never know how this thing but, is going to play out. Right. But, I mean, Sam Darnold's going to have to do a lot with nothing the rest of the year for that to happen. And that the reason why I don't believe it will is because I don't think that he is in a position to succeed. Now, I know that his wide receivers haven't been healthy, and that's been a, a point since the beginning of the season that we continue to make. But do you honestly think that there's any way, shape, or form that Sam Darnold could come out and look good in the second half? I know he did the last two years. But this year, this team, there's no way. Well, so, I, I mean, my, my, my thing is if, uh, hmm, if he's going to stay here, that means that most likely he's going to have to inherit a third offensive system. He's a not third. Think, think about that for a minute. Yeah, Just I know. think about that for a I minute. I know. I know. It's and, crazy. And, and how in, insane that would be for him. So that, that would be for me then on the other side to look at this and say that, you know, I, he should request a trade. He should expect to go somewhere. And the question is where? And I, I, you know, I, I could think of like five different teams. Well, one of them's my team. I'll be honest with you. I'd take him in a heartbeat. All right, no, but, but, let's, but, but let's be realistic about this because your team has a quarterback. They got, two, that, they got that, two more years with a guy who stinks who's getting paid a lot of money. But that doesn't mean that they're not going to try to win. So And he's still really young. All right, so so I don't know. We, we should probably – you know how we did this thing with Le'Veon Bell? Oh, you want – so wait a second. You're already – First thing you told me just a couple minutes ago was that Sam Darnold might be here and inherit a third offensive system, and now we're going with a pool of where Sam Darnold is going to end up. This is a long play. we got to put in more than just $10 with this one because this is going to last months and months and, and months. And then I think we have to draft the picks, like, in other words. You know, in other yeah, because words. here you go. I think you know something, again, because I, I feel like – you know something with this, because mm-hmm. you, you were talking to your NFL insiders yesterday, and I feel like you you know something. So I, I've said the well, Steelers. Well, so you guys don't believe. I, all right. You want the Steelers? No, well, no, 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 no. I've I, said the Steelers. I want the Steelers. Well, I don't know. No, see, you know, you want the 49ers. You think the 49ers. You don't know what I think. Stop you telling said it before. Me, stop telling me what I think. <laughs> Uh, you said it before, though. You said on the air. The reason why I'm regurgitating that to you is because you said it before. You said on the show that he could end up with the 49ers. He, he could. I mean, uh, you know, I do I think that that would be – and, again, it all depends on how Jimmy Garoppolo plays. Jimmy Garoppolo had an unbelievable game yesterday, and he bounced back from a high ankle sprain. Yeah. So if Jimmy Garoppolo leads his team back to the playoffs and he plays like he did last week against the Rams – then all bets are off for that team, I would think, because they have a lot of money invested in him and time invested in him, although they can get out of his contract with very little ramification to the salary cap after this year. Yeah, so I think the teams that would be drafted, that if we did this draft, I think that you would have to throw in the Steelers, you would have to throw in the 49ers, I think you would have to throw in the Vikings, honestly, because they've got a terrible backup situation there as well. Um, and I think they're realizing that they made a mistake. And I know that there's dead cap money, but I, I, yeah, I don't them. know about the Steelers because they're in the AFC, man. Do you think you want to trade them to an AFC team? Yeah. I mean, if you're moving on from him, what do you mm. care? Man, well, I mean, it's I not like it's in care. your division. I mean, you know, they, they see the Steelers and it might be, you know, a postseason situation. But if you got Trevor Lawrence, who cares? Right. right. But I mean, if. It, you know, you see the Steelers in the regular season as much as you see almost any other team the way the schedule is set up. I mean, I, I don't 
I don't know. I, I would I, trading him away to the NFC like he's you know Odell Beckham Jr. going from the Giants to the NFC to the AFC and like send him to Browns and Purgatory. I don't think you do that with Sam Darnold. I think you take the best deal is what you do because if you're entrusting that you've got Trevor Lawrence who was a can't miss prospect, who cares where Sam Darnold goes at that point? You got three years of him getting sick and getting hurt and throwing picks. What does it matter? Send him to the Patriots for all you care. You've got Trevor Lawrence. So I don't, I don't know. Maybe they think differently about it, uh, but I wouldn't really care where he goes. If I ended up with that number one pick and I knew Trevor Lawrence was coming, I'd say I'm building around this and I can't control. Like, give me the best deal for this guy so I can continue to build my team. All right. So what do, what do you think? You think we should do like our own little, uh, our own little draft and then just figure figure that out and maybe put twenty bucks up? That's got to be more than twenty. This is a long play, man. I don't know, but I'm you know you got you got Al's doing five dollar parlays. You got Jerry betting two dollars on twenty teams. You got See, Eddie who doesn't like to you know pay for anything. I mean, you got to you got to get a consensus here. Yeah, I understand, but I feel like I feel like you know. I feel like you're you're slow rolling us here on this. Anybody else get that feeling? Oh, insider this, training for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I think you're slow rolling us because you just this is the second time you've now brought this up. We moved on. Now you're coming back to this pool. I mean, weird. It's a little bit strange. I don't know. I kind of like the pool thing. I've lost a couple pool bets here with you guys. Yeah, I know, but that was stuff. Well, the Le'Veon Bell one, you could have known with insider information. No, I didn't know that. The Giancarlo one. See, here's the thing. Giancarlo, you lost, but nobody could really predict what muscle he was going. You couldn't go to a baseball insider to find out what muscle he was going. And we picked those out of a hat, if you remember. Right. 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 That's right. Well, that's what I just feel like we could we could do a draft here. I don't I don't know. Okay, yeah, do a draft, so we'll pick out the picks. So, yeah, but I still feel like there's a team on your radar we don't know about yet. Well, why don't we do this in a couple of weeks? How's that sound? Let's see, how, let's see how it shakes out. Yeah, I want to do it in a couple of weeks because we'll okay. see. Uh, the, because then we'll see Sam Darnold back and playing. Right. And by the way, did you see practice yesterday? Did you see this video that was put out by SNY and the Jets? I guess they have a, a Twitter account called SNY Jet Videos. And it's you have to watch this thing and tell me this is a real drill. They've got Sam Darnold out on the practice field. And yeah. all they said was Sam Darnold returns to practice. They got Sam Darnold on the practice field. He's got a ball in his right hand, and then he's like running and hopping and touching the ground with his left hand while Joe Flacco is totally disinterested trying to knock the ball out from Sam Darnold, just the two of them. Just watch this and tell me if this is it's a real drill. It's a it real doesn't drill. make any sense. Yeah, it does. Because you know, you can, not everything's going to be perfect in, in an NFL game. So what you try to do is you try to re- recreate some of the imperfect plays, <laughs> and uh, so you could just you know kind of react to it naturally as sure. opposed to overreacting to it and fumbling it. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the red bell so you're notified when we have new content.